Welcome to a special holiday episode of The Bold and the Beautiful. Today, we're at Union Rescue Mission in downtown Los Angeles. The people interviewed are not actors, but rather guests of this extraordinary home for those in need. We're ready to help. You better be, because they're going to serve like 4,000 meals here today. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be very busy. We have to set up the tables, and we're going to break them down later. We're going to serve the food, and we want to greet everyone, too. Great. How's Andy and Kitty? Reverend Bales and Kitty and Chef Darren. They've been up all night deep frying these turkeys. If they seem tired, it's because they are. Now, look, don't forget, don't get so busy we don't say hello to people, right? The staff and the volunteers and the residents, and most especially these folks who are living on the street. Ready to work? Yes. Let's go. Come on. There you are, you made it. Yeah, I'm ready to help. What do you need? <laughs> what do I need? <laughs> Andy, hi, there you are. Good morning. Looking good, guys. Yeah, thanks. Hey, you know what? I think we're all here. My whole gang is here. Do uh, you have a second to talk? Of course. Good. Uh, we're going to talk for a second. Yeah, right? I'll find something to do. <laughs> you better. I am so impressed. You and me look like you know what you're doing around here. Thank you guys for coming. It uh, means a my lot. Pleasure. Let's go over here where it's quiet. So, how are you hanging in there, my friend? Doing well. Great. I've got a <laughs> bit of a sore foot, but I'm. Not gonna let that stop me. Nah, you can rise above that. I've seen you do it. Yeah. <laughs> I have to ask you, what, what's the hardest thing about doing this? I think the hardest thing is, is raising enough resources to meet the need. And the amount of need you can meet depends on how many resources you raise. So you can never do all that your heart wants to do. It takes a lot to take care of the 800 folks that are under our roof. But what, what do you do about the 2,000 people living out on the street? And that that bothers me every night as I drive home. You have days that you're really disappointed in what's happened and what you're <laughs> yes, able to do? Certainly, and especially when somebody has turned their life around, gotten on their feet, and then they, they fall back into the, the old destructive uh, so not habits. Support. And, and you're, you don't know where your friend has gone now. I, I would like very much to be able to talk to some of these, uh, some of the residents here and some of the people from the street. Can you help me with that? Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's really what makes the difference. You know, we think that feeding and all of that makes the difference, but looking somebody in the eyes and spending time with them, building relationship, that is the way to change lives. That's the way uh, that we're going to end homelessness. It's not going to be a big program. It's going to be a, a, a friendship. glad we're doing this. No, this is what the holidays are all about. Talking with people. And the stories. There's so much wisdom in this building. I'm glad to hear you say that. <laughs> I'm so proud of you all for showing up here today. Come on, let's get to it. Okay. Right. okay. Yep. been like being here? Oh wow, at first it was like whoa, <laughs> but a lot of love, a lot of love. 
and a lot of support. Yeah. I feel a little bit better. Do you, do you celebrate Christmas? Yes, I do. Yeah, yes. and what, what does that holiday mean to you? It brings joy to everyone by getting presents. Yeah. And it shows loves. Love. Yeah. Because everybody's... Stories. Like pictures, you bring out pictures and share it with family members. Like, do you have pictures with you? No, I don't. I didn't get a chance to bring any of that wow. with me. So I'm basically starting over. Wow. With everything. Wow. Furniture, TVs, everything you can name. I have to start over. Yeah. And that's hard, meaning taking the bus, trying to find an apartment credit checks and saving, yeah. and then you have to save to get beds, couches, refrigerators, everything, so mm. it's hard. to have you here. Of course. Oh my goodness. So I understand you've got something special for our guest later on? Yeah, we have a little something planned. Hey, perfect. <laughs> I finally made the decision to come here and um, it was the best move I made in my life. I had a hard time when I first got here because of the phenomenal craving was so strong. The only thing I wanted to do was go out and have one more drink. Slowly but surely, God started to relieve the craving and I stopped having the withdrawals and I started being able to look at myself in the mirror and accept who I was at that point. And it started to move uphill. Here, I got my sanity back. It was really a great learning process for me because I learned about discipline. I learned about having integrity. I learned about having respect and owning up to your mistakes. I'm trying to make the best decisions in your life moving forward. Are you in the mentoring program? They have, a, mentoring they have a mentoring program here that's that's uh, uh, We have long different age. churches uh -huh. uh, that mentor some of the guys here. That's cool. And um, I've been to a couple of the churches, P yeah. PCC. And what do you think is the best thing that they're able to do here? The best thing for you? What's the best thing they do for you? The best thing for me is uh, take a man in that's broken from his drug or alcohol addiction, uh, help you learn the underlying issues that want to cause you to go out and drink or use. So what do you think? What do you think that we should we should all ask for for Christmas this year? I mean, if we could if we could change things in this world for everybody, what what do you think you should ask for? To learn how to love one another as brothers and sisters is God loves us as his children. That's what I would pray for. Simple as that. Huh? Yeah about that simple. Hi guys. Hey, what's up guys? Hello. How you what are doing? all your names? I'm Sarah. I'm Max. Damien. I'm Brendan. So what would you guys say is your Christmas wish? I just want our lives back. I lost my car and we got into a wreck. Um, next day I lost my job. Um, and we were doing okay before then. I want my kids to smile again and, and be able to say, you know, we're not relying on anybody else. But because of this place, it makes you realize you don't have to be fiercely independent and to stay there. This place has helped us out and we're almost there. We're almost, we almost have our lives back. I want our lives back for their sake, so. Because like, Instead of looking at this as being homeless or being, you know, um, like being here, since this is a homeless shelter, first I was, you know, I would walk down, you know, Skid Row and say, oh, or like, you know, think, well, you know, it's dirty here, I don't want to be here. But then after a while, you get to realize these people, were the, you know, they are people, they're human beings. Mm -hmm. um, some of them choose to be here, some of them don't. Yeah. Unfor you know, unfortunate things happen. I can speak from myself and my experience being fiercely independent. Sometimes you don't want to say, I need the help. Anybody can end up down here. Um, like I said, I have a degree in psychology. Doesn't mean you're uneducated because you end up homeless. I had a home before. I had my kids. I had my job. I've, you know, I'm mom. It was normal every day for us and then bam, this happens. I can't say enough for the rescue mission because 
every single day they deal with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, and they're caring. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for sharing your story. We've all had those times when we were down, regardless of what put us there. And you guys are showing us that it doesn't matter where you fall, that you can always get up and you don't have to get up alone. So thank you very much. Chef Darren, you cook here all the time? Yes, sir. You're on staff here? I'm staff. Four, I'm, I'm the day side cook, four in the morning to two in the afternoon. And you cook, how many people you cook for every day? Every day? Uh, well, approximately 1,500. <laughs> you do? Every day. That's fantastic. Four times a day. Because we okay. have four different feedings. What about today now? This is like thousands. How many people is this today? Today we, I, our goal was to feed 4,500. Yeah. I think we went over. I, I, we might be at 5,200. <laughs> That's a lot of turkeys. How many turkeys? Uh, 500 well, small turkeys, 200 large turkeys. What do you get out of this, you, besides a nice meal once in a while? <laughs> For me, it's just the satisfaction of seeing someone get the nourishment that they need. Everybody wants to feel valued. Everybody wants to feel needed. So me as a cook, as a chef, as a server, every day I come in to work, my goal is simply to make someone feel valued. And I do it with food. What's everybody's names? Jamil. Jamil. Joseph. Joseph. <clears throat> Janiyah. Janiyah. Well, thanks for sitting down with us today and talking with us. What does this place mean to you right now? It's like a blessing because it was hard to find a place to go to with children. Like I'm a single father with children, then I have a teenager, and uh, this is the only place that I could get to help us. Yeah. If you had to get a message out there to people that they want to know more about missions or you want to share with them uh, how to feel about uh, problems that may arise, what would you say to them? I would say that, um, well, I, this mission has been a blessing. Mm -hmm. I would tell people, don't give up. Don't be ashamed to go. Don't be ashamed to go into a mission. I mean, missions where you're gonna get help. Um, I know that everybody has a story and everybody has a struggle, um, and so do they. They know that everybody's got a different story and everybody needs help in different ways. Uh -huh. So um, if you need help, go for the help. You know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't really want to be living on the street with my children. Um, so I came here and I didn't give up. You know, so. That's awesome. How long have you lived at Union? I've been here for about a month and a half. Okay. And um, where were you before that? Well, I've been homeless since um, February of 2012 and I've been staying in family members' houses motel, um, trailer. Um, I even went to Baja, California for a while, mm. and I recently came back, and that's why I, I came here. And what's it been like for you, Haley? Um, it's been hard, because we moved to different schools. So it's hard to leave your friends, and yeah. What about for you, Destiny? too hard for us to, to be moving around a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about you? Well, kind of sad because sometimes you can't really get a good report card when you move too much. Yeah, that's really hard. Have there been moments through all of this, you know, where you've been able to, like, really laugh or any moments where you feel like, as a family that you remember that are really joyful that you can tell us Being about? here, honestly, right really? here. Really? <laughs> the Why? people we met here. Really? The people we met here, we'd be busting or laughing in the room, praying, singing, oh, praising the right. Lord. I, yes. Wow. <laughs> really. Yeah, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I was born in Denver. I lived, grew up in Glendale. 
primarily an upper middle class neighborhood and, uh, you know, had a decent childhood, some real rough spots and here and there, a little rebellion. And how has being here changed your life and in, in, in not just as far as what you've taken but what you've also wound up giving back? And what I want to do is just start working with teenagers mm -hmm. because when I was a teenager and things started falling apart and I started dabbling, you know, in uh, drugs and alcohol, um, if somebody would have reached, me, reached out then, I think I might have had a better chance. You know. There's a lot of kids out there that are, you know, they have no direction because they don't have uh, anybody in their life to help guide them. I owe a lot to this place. I got my dignity back. I got my pride back. I got my children back. And they say, you can't get them back. But well, each and every one of us needs to be loved. Yeah. And be told that you love. Yeah. And be treated nice, kind, and respectful. And if you do that every day, your light inside a shine. Was it everything you hoped? So many challenges and struggles can make it hard as we go through our day and search for aid. Did you find a time to step outside your own life? It's the spirit. season gives us reason to remember our blessings and help one another no matter who you are and no matter where you've been this is where it all begins because the greatest gift is the one yeah, the greatest gift is the one